Although for me that was what 100 years ago, I still remember how confusing being a teenager is. So today I'm here to make sure that among the many things that are confusing right now, falling in love, growing in unexpected places, figuring yourself out, that among all these confusing things, one thing is clear and easy. Picking the best skincare routine for teenage skin. So whether you are one of these people that slide into my DMs to ask me if age 14 is too early to use a peptide serum, yes. Or if you are a parent to one and want to offer some guidance, I'm here to help. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne. I'm a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews, so you learn to pick exactly those products that work for your individual skin concern. So if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. Teenage acne. I want to start with a few words on acne, as it's a very common skin condition in Western countries. Approximately 85% of adolescents and young adults do suffer from various degrees of acne, at least for a certain period of time. The fact that it is that common, though, does not mean that it can be shrugged off as something you grow out of. Skincare concerns should be taken seriously, no matter the age, and be addressed accordingly. So when are the breakouts a relevant concern? Well, the easiest answer is when they start to bother you. Other, more objective signs would be a change from skin congestion, aka blackheads and whiteheads, to more deep set pimples, the frequency with which they occur, and of course, if they leave any marks or scars. Whenever scarring happens, you should go see a dermatologist, as preventing scars is much easier than treating them. Other skin conditions that could manifest or worsen around this time in your life are psoriasis and eczema, although their first manifestation most commonly happens in smaller children. But why do all these changes suddenly happen? Let's take a look at the changes in teenage skin. As it is often the case, our hormones are to blame. When you reach puberty, and even before that, in pre-puberty, your sex hormones start to increase, the androgens much more than the estrogens. They trigger growth, make facial hair appear, change your voice by changing the size of your larynx, and increase the size of your sebaceous glands. If you didn't know that by now, your sebaceous glands are in the side of your hair follicles or pores and produce sebum to help your skin stay moisturized. Bigger glands means more sebum and the excess along with dead skin cells can clog up the pore and either oxidize becoming a blackhead or build up pus becoming a whitehead. As your hormones don't steadily increase until they reach the optimum level, but instead go up and down and up and down, and something you better get used to, especially as a woman, as I sometimes feel it will stay that way for the rest of your life. As they go up and down, your skin will get more or less oily, have more or less congestion, so another thing that is constantly changing in these chaotic years. Being a teenager does have some advantages, though, at least in terms of skin. Both your skin's disquamation the process of shedding the dead skin, and your skin's collagen and elastin production function at optimum level, which means you have the glowy perky skin by default that people my age have to work hard for. And if you want to keep that plump glowing skin as long as possible, now is the perfect time to lay the foundation for that with the best skincare routine for teenagers. And by the best, I don't mean expensive or complicated, quite on the contrary. Your skincare routine should be simple and focus on three things. Cleansing, moisture, and protection. To figure out the best products for you as an individual, you should get to know your skin. Is it oily and you feel that after washing your face in the mornings a few hours later it's already covered in an oil film again? Or does it feel tight, maybe itchy and has a tendency for dry patches? I don't believe in the strict concept of skin types, as your skin will change a million times throughout the years, influenced by the season, your stress levels, your age, and, you guessed it, hormones. But having this basic understanding of what your skin leans toward really helps picking the right products. In my Building a Skincare Routine playlist are helpful videos on skin type, cleanser types, and all that stuff, so I will link that up in the cards and down in the description box for you. Now is the time to get to know your skin and its needs. It will pay off in the long run. Let's take a look at the different steps. First, cleansing. 
Cleansing is a very important step in your skincare routine, no matter your age, but especially in these more oily days. And cleansing, it's much more complex than it sounds. From figuring out the right product to the right frequency, it is much more than just splashing your face with water. Starting with a product, it all comes down to your skin, but the two things that you should always look for in your products are that they are gentle and pH balanced. What does that mean? Well, a gentle cleanse is one that gets rid of the dirt and excess sebum with, without drying out the skin. You want your skin to feel fresh and clean, but never tight or squeaky clean. A gentle cleanser also does not contain any actives or scrubbing particles, as using them daily usually does more harm than good. Exception of the rule here, if you suffer from congestion, a salicylic acid cleanser could be a great pick to help prevent that. The pH is important because your skin is slightly acidic, and it needs to be in order to function its best. So if you just grab a soap, which is more alkaline, you will raise your skin's pH, making it lose more water and be more prone to foreign invaders that could lead to breakouts. For texture, usually more oily skins prefer foaming cleansers, more dry skin prefer milk types, but in the end both can be gentle and pH balanced, so just go by your preference. Some of my favorite picks are Geek and Gorgeous Jelly Cleanser, as it is gentle pH balanced and enough to remove light layers of makeup. Good Molecules Daily Rose Water Cleansing Gel, similar to the Geek and Gorgeous option. The Ordinary Squall Lane Cleanser, if you want something more hydrating. The Inkalist Oat Cleansing Balm, which is very soothing and great at removing makeup. Pixie Clarity Cleanser, if you want something with salicylic acid in it. Basically, all Pixie cleansers are really nice, with the exception of the hydrating milky one and the vitamin C micellar water. Stay clear of these. CeraVe cleansers, both with and without salicylic acid. I have not used the brand myself, but they do come with high praise. You might have noticed that all of these are on the more affordable sides and that some of my personal favorites are not among them. That is because I don't think your teenage years are the time to spend lots of money on your skincare, simply because you don't have to and there are more important things in your life right now. Now for the cleansing frequency. How often should you cleanse your face? And should you do a single or a double cleanse? That depends. If your skin is oily and prone to breakouts, cleansing your face morning and night is a good idea. If it's more on the dry side, a thorough cleanse at night and just some water in the mornings is fine. The evening cleanse is, however, non-negotiable, especially if you are already wearing makeup. I didn't wear foundation when I was a teenager, but then again, that was back in the middle age while the earth was still flat, so things might be different for you. If you wear heavier makeup, think foundation, contour, brow and highlight, you need to remove that first and then cleanse your skin. If you remove it with your cleanser and then go in with the same cleanser for a second round or use a makeup remover and then your cleanser is up to you. The only rule you need to follow is don't use a salicylic acid cleanser to remove your eye makeup. And that was when I realized I forgot to put on my lipstick, so let's move on with a complete face. Next up, moisturizer. And yes, before you ask, you can skip the toner serum sheet mask stuff. Your skin is functioning at optimum level when it comes to collagen and cell turnover. You don't need extra exfoliation or collagen stimulating ingredients. What you need to is to make sure your skin is well hydrated. And to keep it that way, you need a good moisturizer to reduce transepidermal water loss, Tool. Which one you prefer again comes down to your skin. More oily skins usually prefer gel type formulas or lightweight lotions, while dry skin prefers the richer textures. When in doubt, I would always start with a lighter version and then see how the face feels within a few hours. If it is tight, you need something richer. If it is too oily, something lighter. Not moisturizing in an attempt to dry out the oils might actually backfire, as your skin will try and make up for the lack of oils by producing more of its own, which, before you ask, does not work the other way around. Oiling up the skin will not make the sebum production decrease, as it is mostly stimulated by your hormones. If your skin is very oily, you can replace the moisturizer with your sunscreen in the mornings to reduce the amount of layers on your skin. My recommendations would be Neutrogena Hydro Boost, which has different options for different skin types, like the Aqua Gel, the Aqua Cream, and the original one. CeraVe moisturizers, again, with different options for different skin types. And if you are in the UK, the Sam Pharma products, which are unisex and affordable. If you want, you can use something light in the mornings and something richer at night, or as I mentioned before, something light at night and just use sunscreen in the mornings. But you can also use the same product both mornings and night. 
protection, aka sunscreen. The first and most important step, and the one that I want you to do even if you don't do anything else, is wearing sunscreen. It will protect you from premature aging, will prevent hyperpigmentation once you reach my age, and of course offers protection against skin cancer. It also helps to reduce acne severity if you manage to find the right one, which can be a struggle, I know that. Speaking of the right one, this again comes down to personal preference and your skin, but it should provide at least medium protection, so around an SPF of 30 on an average day. SPF of 50 is of course better, just to be sure, and broad spectrum protection. I have a whole playlist on your sunscreen questions, which I will link again up in the cards and the description box, but in short, the best sunscreen for you is the one that you like enough to wear daily. My personal favorites would be Biore Aqua Rich UV Essence SPF 50, as it is a very lightweight and great for oily skin. La Roche Posay Shakta Fluid SPF 50, which also comes in waterproof if you do outdoor sports and such. Extra tips. Now for some lifestyle tips, as good skin needs more than just products. Eat a balanced diet, sleep enough, always remove your makeup before bed, cleanse your makeup brushes properly, don't pick at your skin, and should you ever have any skincare concerns, seek professional help. An early consultation with a dermatologist is much better than trying to solve acne on your own, and if you get the chance to go for a facial, maybe as a birthday treat, at a good esthetician, one that takes time to educate you about your skin rather than sell you a bunch of products, you are well on your way to many years of beautiful skin. But what about the serums and face masks? As I said before, you probably don't need them. But if you want some, just because, and <laughs> I totally get that, here is what I recommend. Salicylic acid. Most teenagers suffer from congestion, especially in the T-zone, and salicylic acid is great to help with that. Instead of using it in your face wash, you can get it as a leave-on product and use that once or twice a week. My personal favorite is the ordinary 2% salicylic acid, but there are many other options available. Just look for a concentration of 1-2%. to Niacinamide. This ingredient is a great all-rounder. It can help control sebum production, is anti-inflammatory, increases hydration, and even helps with hyperpigmentation. It is often part of your moisturizer already, but as a serum, I recommend the ordinary niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%, which I love myself. Again, there are other options by other brands. A concentration of 5 up to 10% is what you should be looking for. Hydration. To be honest, I don't think face masks are necessary in a skincare routine, but I acknowledge the self-care spec they have. So if you want one as a weekly ritual, opt for one that boosts hydration. Rinse off or sheet mask is again up to your personal preference. Just pick what feels more relaxing. There you go. This is the breakdown on how to build the perfect skincare routine for teenage skin. Now you are set until you reach your early 20s, which is when you can come back, because until then I will hopefully have continued this series up to the age of 110. Tell me in the comments below if you think I missed something. I will link to more videos on the screen now that I think you might enjoy, and I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!